Black Lives Plaza, Five Mayor around the Parthenon. And we are about four minutes away from church bells all along 16th Street, tolling for eight minutes and four seconds. And I would watch them around the Parthenon and pay distress. Right now, we are over here in a and speech by Martin Luther King. Reality, Just a few minutes that. ago, people were kneeling ahead of the 8 minutes and 46 seconds where they will be kneeling while the church bells are tolling. But I just Roman want Empire. you to listen in on this, okay? And I would see developments around there through various emperors and leaders, but I wouldn't stop there. I would even come up to the day of the Renaissance and get a quick picture of all that the Renaissance did for the cultural and aesthetic life of man, but I wouldn't stop there. I would even go by the way that the man for whom I'm named had his habitat. And I would watch Martin Luther as he tacked his 95 theses on the door at the church that he had to sign the Emancipation Proclamation, but I wouldn't stop there. I would even come up to the early 30s. I would even come up to the early 30s and see a man grappling with the problems of the bankruptcy of his nation. Forty-six seconds in memory of George Floyd. And While say, that happens, if you are allow me to, to live, live just a few years in the road. second so half, of the 20th century, I will be happy. The newly named Black Lives Matter Plaza do in fact move. Now that's a strange statement to make because the world is all messed up. The nation is sick. Trouble is in the land. Confusion all around. That's a strange statement. But I know somehow that only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. And I see God working in this period of the 20th century in a way that men in some strange way are responding. Something is happening in our world. The masses of people are rising up, and wherever they are assembled today, whether they are in Johannesburg, South Africa, Nairobi, Kenya, Accra, Ghana, New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, Jackson, Mississippi, or Memphis, Tennessee, the cry is always the same, we want to be free. is that we have been forced to a point where we are going to have to grapple with the problem that men have been trying to grapple with through history, but the demands didn't force them to do it. Survival demands that we grapple with. Men for years now have been talking about war and peace. But now, no longer can they just talk about it. It is no longer a choice between violence and non-violence in this world. It's non-violence or non-existence. That is where we are today. Also in the human rights revolution, if something isn't done and done in a hurry, 
I know we were expecting to hear the church bells tolling the long out of that long years of poverty. But I think the moment that we're having here, listening to the speech from Martin Luther King Jr., is what is dominating this moment here. I'm not sure if church true. bells are tolling farther down 16th closer to the other end of D.C., but if you do hear them, share that moment with us. Pull out your cell phone, take a video, tag WUSA 9, and let us know where you were when you heard it. Let's continue listening to Martin Luther King, Jr. To see what is unfolding. And I'm happy that he's allowed me to be in Memphis. I can remember WUSA 9. I can remember when Negroes were just going around, as Ralph has said, so often scratching where they didn't itch and laughing when they were not tickled. But that day is all over. We mean business now, and we are determined to gain our rightful place in God's world. And that's all this whole thing is about. We aren't engaged in any negative protests and in any negative arguments with anybody. We are saying that we are determined to be men, we are determined to be people. We are saying, we are saying that we are God's children. And if we are God's children, we don't have to live like we are forced to live. Now, what does all of this mean in this great period of history? It means that we've got to stay together. We've got to stay together and maintain unity. You know, whenever Pharaoh wanted to prolong the period of slavery in Egypt, he had a favorite, favorite formula for doing it. What was that? He kept the slaves fighting among themselves. But whenever the slaves get together, something happens in Pharaoh's court, and he cannot hold the slaves in slavery. When the slaves get together, that's the beginning of getting out of slavery. Now let us maintain unity. Secondly, let us keep the issues where they are. The issue is injustice. The issue is the refusal of Memphis to be fair and honest in its dealings with its public servants who happen to be sanitation workers. Now we've got to keep attention on that. That's always the problem with a little violence. You know what happened the other day and the press dealt only with the women to break. I read the article. They very seldom got around to mentioning the fact that 1,300 sanitation workers are on strike and that Memphis is not being fair to them, and that Mayor Lowell is in dire need of a doctor. They didn't get around to that. You can see people putting on their ponchos. It's probably going to rain any second now. now we gonna We're going to have to end our live stream just for a minute again. so that we can prepare our camera so that it doesn't get soaking wet and in ruined. We'll be back with you in just a few moments. It is supposed to be.